Hi, I'm Hector Garcia. I'm an accountant from Miami, Florida, and uh, I'm an advanced QuickBooks Pro advisor. And I like to uh, do a lot of data import into QuickBooks. So naturally, one of the things that people ask me all the time is, Hector, how do I import budgets into QuickBooks? Now, if you try it, um, you've known that it's not easy. Importing budgets is not an easy thing. Um, but if you never tried it before, I'm actually going to show you step by step exactly what you have to do in order to create a good budget. Okay. First thing I want to do is I probably want to be basing my budget based on some sort of historical information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into reports. Then I'm going to click on accountant and taxes and then trial balance. Now you understand a little bit later on why exactly I'm doing a trial balance and not something else. We're going to do a trial balance. That's fine. And let me go ahead and do a uh, last fiscal year. And let's say, for example, I wanted to build a budget based on uh, the numbers from last year. I'm just going to take the same numbers from last year um, and add, let's say, 20% to every single num digit in there. So I'm going to go ahead and export that into Excel. So I'm going to click on Excel, create worksheet. Okay. And then go ahead and click on export. Now, the number one reason why I started with a trial balance was because before I start building uh, Excel uh, spreadsheets randomly for budgets, I don't want to make the mistake of not having my account, the chart of accounts, 100% equaling 100% what I'm supposed to have in QuickBooks. So by exporting the trial balance, that helps. Now, notice that when I exported the trial balance, it only had uh, more or less about... Uh, 40 uh, columns or 40 rows, sorry, of accounts that belong to the profit and loss. Anything um, on top of uh, equity, opening balance equity is going to go in the balance sheet. So I typically can only do uh, for either the profit and loss or the balance sheet. Uh, so we have to do uh, one by one separately. However, there's only about 40 accounts there. And if I go back into QuickBooks and I click on Customize Report top left button, and then I click on advanced. I can include all my accounts. If I click on all and then hit OK and then hit OK, notice that now I have a much bigger chart of accounts and a lot of accounts that have not been utilized. So the, the challenge or the problem with exporting it without hitting that all button is when I'm then constructing my budget in Excel, I'm not going to have my complete chart of accounts. So this doesn't work at all. And I have to make sure that I first do that, that I showed you, we go to customize report, advance, and all to show every single active account. So now I can ready to export. So I'm going to click on Excel, and I can go to create new worksheet. And that's going to go ahead and export into a new spreadsheet. And then once that opens, we're going to go ahead and delete the stuff we don't need. So we're not going to need any of the accounts all the way up to the last equity account. So let me select them all and delete. Try some more here. Perfect. So now we are um, left with all of my profit and loss accounts, expenses and uh, income. Now, what I want to do is I want to convert all my debits into negatives and all my, uh, sorry, my credits into negatives and my debits into positives. And that's pretty simple. So here I'm going to put annual and then I'm going to do equals debit minus my credit. Simple formula. Press enter and then click and drag that down all the way down. Whoops, too far. All the way down. I can go ahead and delete the last total. I don't need that. Perfect. I can clean this up a little bit more. I can delete this part and delete that part. Perfect. And then all these debits and credits, we, we wouldn't need that anymore, so we can just hide it. And this would be my new calculated annual budget for every single account. And this should be your starting point. So you should be starting 
Here, if you want to run uh, a, to a total running balance, uh, you can do that. So if I can just put here sum and sum this up, I can do a total running balance. Just remember, in this case, uh, because the credits, which are the income, are the negative ones, and the profit is, I mean, the expenses are the positive ones, uh, this is going to show an inverse effect. So that's actually profit. Let me go ahead and just put a negative in that formula. So that's my profit on this budget is 939.77. So if I actually pull a profit and loss for last year and select here last fiscal year, and I scroll all the way down, notice that I basically just copied my exact same profit and loss from the previous year. So knowing that this is the annual, then what I can do is I can do January, February and click and drag this down to the right all the way to when I get to December. Perfect. And then I can start doing interesting things like, for example, I can do equals this number divided by 12 and then multiply it times 1.2, which would be basically a 20% increase. And then I can click and drag that down all the way down. Perfect. And then I can also click and drag that to the right. To the, right. Uh, the problem is because of that 0.12 that I have here, it's going to keep multiplying 20% uh, up on, um, on top of itself. So maybe I don't want that. Uh, maybe what I do want is on the month of February, I'm going to take my 20% increase for the first month and then just increase it, let's say 1%, so the 1.01. That way we don't have such an aggressive growth structure. We are overall wanting to see 20% more of everything, um, but um, well, every single month is gonna be 1%. So you can take whatever approach you want to this. I'm not saying there's a right way or a wrong way of doing this. Um, so that's up to you. Let me go ahead and click and drag this all the way to the right until I get every single month. There's two more left here. Perfect. And this should also only be a maximum of uh, two digits. So you really can't get uh, three or five decimals in here. So what we must do on these formulas is we also must do a round. So we'll do here round to two decimals. So that was my formula. I put that inside of a round and um, and there's the same calculation. And then I added two for two digits. I'll hit enter and then click and drag this down. Zoom back out. And for my February, same thing. I can, well, once I'm already stuck at two digits, then everything else uh, should be calculated as such. But if it doesn't work that way, let's go ahead and also enclose this inside of a round formula. Yeah, it's a little bit painful at the beginning, kind of a lot of, feels like a lot of manual work. Um, however, once you kind of get this down and this becomes your template, then it becomes uh, pretty easy. Okay, there we go. Now you can manually increase or decrease any of these things uh, that you want as you want them, whatever it is that you want. Let's say, for example, this is okay with me as is, or for example, I went down, there were some things with zeros I want to go ahead and add some numbers there. So I'll put 100 here, 500 here, 300 here. So I'm just kind of arbitrarily just adding numbers there. Okay. So there's my, basically my underlying budget that I'm going to use um, to then import into, um, into QuickBooks. However, to be able to import this, um, I first need to set up an importable template. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this for a second. And let's talk about how to create a budget template for us to import our Excel data, which by the way, we made sure that we built them with the exact same chart of accounts that QuickBooks had by exporting that trial balance. So this is how we create a template. We're gonna go to File, Utilities, Export, List to IIF, and then we're gonna click the little checkbox that says Budgets, and then we hit OK. Then we save it somewhere in the desktop, it's just a file. 
with a yes. They will minimize this. And then we should see uh, the file that we just exported, the IAF file, there it is. And then I have to open this in Excel. So let me go ahead and open up my other spreadsheet. And I could just be in a blank workbook here. I don't have to be on my actual budget spreadsheet. Remember, this is the one that we were just working on. This is the one, this is the one that we want to import. But let me go ahead and open up my template by dragging that IAF file into Excel. That should open an entirely different Excel spreadsheet, which is very difficult to read, by the way. Um, let me go ahead and select all and reorganize this. Uh, column A, these are headers. One all the way down to three are also headers. And typically, we don't touch any of these. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to now fill these zeros with the information here we have in our budgets. So in other words, we want to make sure that every one of the lines gets uh, pasted back in here. And if there's any extra accounts, we just have to keep adding that BOD, BUD header at A. So let me just show you an example. So let me start by selecting my entire um, account list. Then I'll hit copy, then go into my template IAF file, start at, this, at the very first one, right click and paste. Then I'm gonna scroll down to see if there's any extras. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of extras. All I have to do is copy this BUD word over all the way down to the last one. There we go. Okay, I don't think this last one's an actual account. Let me delete that. Okay, uh, there we go. Okay. So now that I copied my accounts, now I have to now replace these zeros with the actual data from my original budget. So I'm gonna ignore annual and just bring in the months. So January through December, and this should just work um, because of how we copy and paste it. So copy, and then go here. Start with my very first month here, which is typically column D. Right click and paste. Now, if this happens, we may want to do pay special. So I'm going to right click and click on pay special. Now, the reason why I'm doing pay special is because uh, there was formulas on the other one. So by pay special, it's just going to bring the original um, digits over, no, no formulas. Perfect. And then you just want to make sure that everything else, like start date, it all begins with 121, 122. So let me just kind of click and drag this all the way down all the way down perfect and then i'm going to clear all my classes because i'm not i wasn't working with classes at, at that point so i'll clear that as well perfect so we got no classes no customers all the same start date we have the actual real accounts that are in my quickbooks file which are the original accounts that i used to build actually build my budget in excel actually using QuickBooks data, which was great. Um, and then this column here, that's it just says month, 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 month. Just make sure that you don't have any gaps there either. So let's click and drag uh, all those months down there also. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. Just regular save, nothing special. Just save, yes. Then I can close it. I can go back into QuickBooks. And before I import it, let's just take a look at what that budget looks like now. So I'm gonna go into company, budget and planning, set of budgets. I'll select my budget for, I believe it was 2021 that I was looking at. So right now it's just a bunch of blanks. Actually, no, it was 2022, 2022, there you go. So there's some accounts with blanks, some accounts with information. Um, and now when I import it, this sheet should entirely change. So I'm gonna to go to file, utilities, import IAF file. Then I'm going to select that template that I was working with, the one that I just copy and pasted my budget into. Hit open. Then hit OK. Let me go ahead and exit this budget and open it back up. Company, planning and budgeting, set of budgets, year 2022, and see how it looks different. Now there are zeros uh, where there weren't zeros before and we see um, much more information be filled in. 
So I can actually just keep that template and keep modifying the budget in Excel if I want to and just keep importing it back into QuickBooks. Now, why is that important? Okay, let's, let's run the report. Reports. Let's go to budgets and forecasting. Budget versus actual. Let's do for 2022, which is a year that we were working on. Hit next. Account by month. Next and finish. Now by default, the budget is going to show by month. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this to year by clicking on month and then clicking on year. Okay, perfect. So let me go ahead and hit collapse and see there's my actual performance, which is a bunch of zeros now compared to my budget. So for example, let me go ahead and create some sales here. So let me do an invoice. Uh, the idea is that you can kind of see live everything um, that's going on and why there's even a point of doing uh, a budget in the first place. So let me go ahead and run, uh, I'll just do an invoice here at random. And I'll date this January 1st, 2022. I'll pick an item. Pick an item here. And let me go ahead and make it, just make it 10,000. And then hit save and close. Save and close. Okay. So now we see that we are actually over budget with our sales. 130%. So that's obviously, that would be obviously great news. Now let me show you live what happens to our budget as we update it. So let me go ahead and minimize this, go back and open up that budget file, open up that budget template. I'm just going to edit it right here. So let's see which ones we were looking at. We were looking at landscaping services, labor, maintenance and repairs. So we're looking at that one specifically, maintenance and repairs. And let me go into QuickBooks and we'll go down to maintenance and repairs. There it is. And we're going to have a $20,000 budget for that account, just to kind of tell you how we're going to be under budget. So let me do it by month here. By month would be, let's say 20,000 divided by 12. So that would be my monthly budget. So let me go ahead and bring that in. Make sure that's negative and copy this all the way down. There we go. And then hit save. Minimize this. Import it again. File, utilities, import, IAF file. Select my IAF file, hit open. Oh, it was still open by Excel. You have to make sure that you close it completely. That's why it gave me an error. Let's try that again. So just keep your eye on this 10,000. Here, those are my sales. Let me go ahead and um, collapse this. So 10,000 are my sales. My previous budget was uh, 7,000. Uh, 7, so I was basically over budget with my sales, which was great. But now I just added 20,000 additional uh, around there. So now my budget is going to be about 27 or 26,000. So let me go to file, utilities, import, IAF file, select my budget IAF, hit OK. And then notice how my budget went up. So now my, I am actually 36% of budget. I am now under in terms of my sales. So I haven't gotten to my sales yet. So that's kind of uh, the ni nice thing about being able to update budgets on the fly that you can actually in real time see that budget versus actual, um, that budget versus actual profit and loss report be updated as we update our budgets outside of QuickBooks. Now, is it worth it updating outside of QuickBooks? I would say yes. If you have a spreadsheet that a lot of people are inputting and they're modifying and maybe a bunch of people in the organization are sending that spreadsheet back and forth until you come up with a final number. Yeah, that's possible. But you have to make sure it follows that exact format, uh, which is basically the accounts uh, with um, that we exported from the trial balance, which was the, the best way to uh, get that export up and running. Anyway, I thought that was useful. Hope you start importing your budgets uh, from uh, Excel into QuickBooks. Subscribe to the channel, hit like, add comments below if you have any questions or ideas about other videos that we can make. Thank you.